The precious Holy Spirit is too precious, too important to be ignored by a believer. It's just too precious, the Holy Spirit. It's just too important to be ignored. It is someone, it is a personality, I must say, not someone, a personality that we must honor, treat with dignity, give the due honor he deserves, the precious Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us of a man by the name David who had a walk with the Holy Spirit. David had a walk with the Holy Spirit. We'll keep looking at the scripture, book of uh, Psalm 51. In Psalm 51 verse 10, David made a prayer. There he cried out to the Father, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. There's a reason. There's a reason. David said, Father, all I want is the Holy Spirit. I've, I've made a mistake. I, I've sinned against you. I don't want the Holy Spirit to be taken from me. If you have to take from, take from me the throne as the king of Israel, that is okay by me. You can have a throne. But the Holy Spirit should not be taken. Then here is the question for you and I. What is more important than the Holy Spirit in our lives? What is that thing? Is it ministry? What is that thing that is more important than the Holy Spirit, the precious Holy Spirit, the one that made Jesus to go to the cross? Jesus said, for us to have the Holy Ghost, to become the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost, Jesus had to go to the cross. Jesus went to the cross for us to become the temple, the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. For us to become the dwelling place, to become the heaven of God. Restore to me the joy of salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Do not cast me away from your presence. The presence of the Lord is something that today not too many believers have understanding of the presence of the Lord. Not too many believers know what it means to cherish the presence of the Lord. I think there's so much that... that uh, the church is busy chasing after instead of the presence of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you so much, sweet Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you, the promise of the Father. We thank you. Jesus said to the disciples, It is expedient that I go away. If I do not go, the comforter, the helper, the strengthener, the teacher, the advocate, the standby, the intercessor would not come. Thank you, Jesus, who paid the price for us to have the Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit, we want you to help us this season that we will not take you for granted. That we will cherish you, we will honor you, we will reverence you, we will appreciate you daily in our lives and our ministries. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. It is possible to have ministry without the Holy Spirit. It is very possible. It is possible to have ministry as it is today, as it is today, I say it again, as it is today, it is possible to have ministry without the Holy Spirit. Jesus, uh, because Father David said, do not cast me away from your presence because I know the importance of your presence. Then he also made a prayer, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Would this be the cry of the church today. Look, okay, let's say, if this is the cry of the church today, the prayer of the church today, that we just want the Holy Spirit more than ever before. We want to, we want to see the reality of the Holy Spirit in the church more than ever before. I repeat myself, there are many things we can do without the Holy Spirit. There are many, many things we can do. The church, we can lean on the power of the mind. We can lean on the on uh, internet 
should run ministry without the Holy Spirit. We can lean, we can depend on what we know how to do. Good sound system, good teaching or preaching of the Bible without the Holy Spirit. There are many things we can do. I'm saying as it is today, one can actually successfully run ministry without the Holy Spirit. It is very possible because when it comes to preaching the Bible, you don't really need the Holy Spirit as it is today. You can go on the internet and just download a message there, download uh, any stuff there and just preach. And then uh, you can rasmatize the people. You have a lot you can display and the people would be blown away. It's, wow, we've never heard this like this before. So there, there's still a lot. And I'm repeating myself, you can, we can, anybody can run a ministry successfully today without the Holy Spirit. And it is also possible not to tell the difference. It is possible at times not to tell the difference between a minister of the gospel and the ministry that the Holy Spirit is really at work and where the Holy Spirit is not. If, if this it is possible. You know why? There are false prophets and fake, fake ministers, pastors, fake ministries that to a large extent they seem to be doing well than those who are truly working with the Holy Spirit. But here is my point. Listen to David again. He said, Do you not cast me away from your presence? The presence, the presence of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. When we begin to give attention to the Holy Spirit, we begin to guard that to the Holy Spirit, we begin to see the Holy Spirit as the all-important personality in our, in our lives, in the ministry, then we will realize, we will be able to tell the difference. Let me say it that way. You, we, we would be able to tell the difference of, I don't sense the Holy Spirit here. I don't see the Holy Spirit here. There is so much manifestation that I can tell in my spirit, this is not the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible tells us, that we have what it takes to test the spirit. First John chapter four verse one. First John chapter four verse one tells us that it is the responsibility of a believer to test the spirit. That you should test the spirit. Don't be carried away by miracles, wonders, and signs, by manifestations. That you should actually test the spirit whether the spirit is truly of Christ, whether it is the spirit of Christ. What do I check out for? To check for the fruits. Check the fruits. Don't be led by the by by the manifestations. To check the fruits. Check the flavor. Check does this smell like Christ? Does this smell like Christ? Does it feel like Christ? Does it look like Christ? So you can tell. Does does the spirit testify? Does it give testimony? Of the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It tells the Spirit. If you look closely, you can you can feel, you can see for yourself that this Spirit here, I cannot smell Jesus Christ. I cannot, you can, I cannot feel Jesus Christ. I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot see Jesus Christ. Test the Spirit. The Spirit that does not reveal, that does not give us the revelation of Jesus Christ. Say that is not Christ. That is not Christ. Don't take the Holy Spirit for granted. Don't become familiar with the Holy Spirit that you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you. This is the season. This is the season that we must tabernacle with the Holy Spirit. We have to tabernacle with Him. Pray like David in Psalm 19 verse 13. He says, Keep back your servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. We need help in this area. Every one of us, we need the help of the Holy Ghost in this area. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. In Proverbs chapter 3, 
from verse 5 to 6. I will just read one or two. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit for the Lord. For the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. You have to see the Holy Spirit as the Lord, not some power you tap into to have results, not some power you call upon for results. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. The Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Another scripture that tells us about the Holy Spirit in that in that sense is found uh, oh thank you Holy Spirit for the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord the Holy Spirit is the Lord that came on the day of Pentecost is the one that came on the day of Pentecost see let's look at like I said in the last broadcast let's look at the Holy Spirit as the special guest from heaven the one that came purposely intentionally from heaven to be with us to live in us to help us fulfill the purpose of the father for our lives let's say the holy spirit how do you treat a guest that is so special in your life a guest of yours that is so special that you know he has so much to deliver to you to give to you here is your here is this guest in your house I'm sure you will take care of this guest. I'm sure you will ensure that this guest is comfortable. I'm sure you will want to make this guest very comfortable. I'm sure of that. I want to believe that with all of my heart. You do everything, not to hurt this guest. You will go as far as giving this guest, just giving him special time, giving him special attention. I'm sure you will do that. I'm sure also you give him priority, your special guest. I'm sure you give him priority. Over every other thing, every other person in the house. You you will be so conscious of his welfare. You make special meal for this guest. You give him special food. You entertain your guest in a special way. You you give him house tour. You give your guest house tour. Oh, this is your bedroom, and this is the kitchen. This is the fridge. If you need anything in the fridge, if I'm not around, you can just go there and help yourself. You give him house tour. Give your guest house tour. Then you take him to the garden. You show him places in the in the, in, the, in the garden. Oh, this is good for you. You can have fun here. You do that for your special guest. Like I said, you make special meal for your special guests. You take it to special restaurants. You, get, you take it to special restaurant. You make the house comfortable for your guests. You make the house tidy. You make the for just for the days that your guests will be with you. You just want to make your guests happy. You want to make him happy. And of course, you create time to be with your guests for communication. You create time. You don't want your guests to be bored. You don't want your guests just to be in the house, not not being happy in your house. You don't want that. You want your guests to be happy, because this is your special guest. At times, you take your guests out for special dinner. You take your special guest. You take your special guest for special dinner. Even if you don't have the for, you don't have the, the finance. Somehow, you make provision to take your guests to a special dinner, and you might go take your guests out for shopping. These are some of the things we do for our guests. You might even have to stop your family members, friends, neighbors that your special guest would not want around. That please don't come to my house this time. My guests, you might not even tell them about your guests, but just keep them away. And, of, and also, because this person is such a special guest, you might go. Go, go out there telling the, your colleagues, telling friends, telling neighbors, oh, do you know that Mr. Susan and so is in my house? Say, really? He's in your house? Wow, how, how did you get him to visit you? 
Say, well, that is my guest. It's my guest. You'll be so proud of this special guest. You'll be so proud. It's your special guest. You see, a special guest is a special person with special connection or blessing. That is what makes a special guest. It's a special person and he has special connection and he's able to give you a blessing that is special to you. That is what makes a special guest. There's something special about this guest that makes him a special guest. Possibly, he has power to bless you, he has connection to bless you, he has something to give to you, and then you want to treat him in a way that somehow he will leave a blessing when he's, when he's leaving your house. That makes him a special guest. The Holy Spirit is the special guest from heaven. Did you hear me? The Holy Spirit is the special guest from the Father. He came for your advantage. He came to be with you and I. He came for our advantage. He came to make life sweet for us. He came to help us have, uh, have a life of comfort. He is the comforter. He came to help us to strengthen us in our weaknesses. He came as our advocate, one that is there for us, one that is making intercession for us as our intercessor. He came as our helper, helper, one that is there to help us, whether in time of trouble, in time of difficulties, in time of uh, the, when it looks as if the devil is so mad at us, he came to fight our battles. The Bible tells us when the enemy will come as a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them. The Holy Spirit will raise a standard against them. This is not the season to take the Holy Spirit for granted. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 16, it tells us of the time we, we are living in, this time, darkness is upon the earth. Gross darkness upon the people. Darkness is upon the earth. Gross darkness upon the people. You can pray against this darkness, but we, you might not have results because it is scriptural. But the Bible says, the glory of the, the Lord will arise upon you and I that are in Christ Jesus, and His glory, His glory will be seen upon us. The glory of God is the Holy Spirit. The glory is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the glory of God. He is the spirit of glory. You have the Father of glory. You have the King of glory. You have the Lord of glory. You have the God of glory. You have the spirit of glory. The Holy Spirit is the glory of God that was with the, that was with the Israelites in the wilderness as pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. The Holy Spirit. They were able to journey in the wilderness because of the Holy Spirit that was with them. And God told them clearly, spoke to Moses, that they must not take the Holy Spirit for granted in the wilderness. As long as they listened to the Holy Spirit, it was well with them in the wilderness. As long as they obeyed the Holy Spirit, it was well with them in the wilderness. At every time they turned against the Holy Spirit, it went ill with them. It went ill for them. Things did not go well with them. As long as they listened to the Holy Spirit, as long as they obey the Holy Spirit, they had results. They were protected because the Holy Spirit was with them as pillar of cloud by day to protect them, to be there for them, to give them comfort, to strengthen them, to encourage them as pillar of fire by night to keep away the enemies at night. Who would want to come near to the Israelites when there was this strange, unbelievable, incredible fire around them in the night? Who would want to come close to them? Even it is possible they did not see the fire, and I want to believe that they did not see the fire. The Israelites, or maybe they saw it, but somehow the enemies, I'm sure the father will make them to, the enemies to see the fire at a distance. They would be scared that what kind of straight fire is this? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Today, the church of Jesus Christ has become so familiar with the Holy Ghost that all we want from the Holy Ghost is the tongue. As long as I can, I, can, I can just speak in tongues, as long as I can tell the Holy Ghost to come and get something done for me, as long as I can call on the Holy Ghost to release this fire upon the enemies, the Holy Ghost is not all this. It's a personality. 
is the Spirit of the Lord. It's Almighty God Himself. The Holy Ghost is Almighty God Himself. Jesus made this clear to us. For the Lord, pardon, Jesus made this clear to us that God is Spirit. God is Spirit. God is Spirit. Is the Spirit. Book of John, John chapter 4. He said, Jesus made it plain. God is Spirit. Let us be careful so that we don't find ourselves falling, breaking down, and then not having results instead of having this understanding that maybe something is not right between me and the Holy Ghost, you focus on the enemy. It is so easy to focus on the enemy. Meanwhile, it is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that needs to be taken care of. Let's return to the Holy Spirit. Let's return to the Holy Spirit. Let's return to His presence. Let's return to Him. He is your comforter. He is your helper, your teacher, your strengthener, your advocate, your intercessor. Are you getting all this? He is your standby. The Holy Spirit, one person, one personality, means all this to you. Only, only Holy Ghost, the only, the mighty Holy Ghost, the indispensable Holy Ghost. Don't you think you need to treat this personality? With honor, dignity. Don't you think you need to treat him as special guest from heaven? Give him priority, give him attention, make sacrifice to be with him, give him access to every area of your life. Give him access, just like you take your special guest on the on house tour. So also it is with the Holy Spirit. So also it is with the Holy Spirit. If you don't give him access to certain areas. In your life, of your life, in your life, the Holy Spirit will not go there. If, if you give him access to your marriage, it would attend, it would attend to your marriage. If you don't give him access to your finance, your career, your business, he will not force himself to help you in that area. If you give Holy Spirit access to your relationship, to your ministry, you give him access, Holy Spirit, help me in my ministry, help me in the ministry you're giving me, he would help you. He would help you. That is the truth. But if all you want is for the Holy Spirit to help you deal with your enemies, deal with uh, problems. And you don't want the Holy Spirit to deal with your character flaws. You don't want the Holy Spirit to help you to live a life that is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will be watching you. He will be watching you making mistakes, falling into sin and rising, falling into fornication, adultery, falling into the, all of these things, lies, cheating, compromising, and they will be watching you. He will give him access. Open the door of your life. Tell him, Holy Spirit, I give you access to every aspect of my life. Do whatever you want to do. Break me, mold me, change me, make me who Jesus Christ wants me to be. Make me the altar of expression of the glory of God. This is it. This is what we have been praying for, what we'll be waiting for. And now the Father is saying, return to my spirit. Return to the Holy Ghost. Stay with him. Commune with him. According to 2 Corinthians 13, 14, that tells us about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the Holy Spirit, the fellowship, communion, partnership, sharing together, comradeship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Dear people of God, please, let's return to the Holy Spirit. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to have His way in our lives, in our marriages, in our businesses, careers, all that we do, let's allow the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit and thinking if I give him access, I'm no I will not have be able to do the things I want to do by myself. I remember a young man some years ago that said to me that I don't want God to tell you to marry. I don't want the Holy Ghost to tell me to marry. That when he, when the Holy Spirit tells you the God tells you to marry, you cannot make decisions by yourself, you cannot make choices by yourself. That are people who have who were led to to, by God to pick their spouses that they find it difficult in their marriages. I said, no, no, boy. You have to allow the Holy Ghost. Let him choose for you. Let him guide you. Let him be part of your life, every aspect of your life. This is a season that we must all return to the Holy Spirit. This is a season we must all give ourselves to the Holy Spirit. This is a season we must return to the art of communion, the art of communion. We've lost it. 
the act of communing, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Let's return to him. I want to present to you the book the Lord gave me. I pray that it's well positioned on the screen. The book the Lord gave me, and uh, this book came out in the month of uh, December 2021. We were able to publish, uh, not publish, we were able to get some copies out this year, last month precisely, the month of uh, May. Uh, but not last month again, now, we're in, in a new day today. We were able to get copies out month, uh, of May 2022. In this book, I shared practical steps how to, how to have communion with the Holy Spirit, which is one of the things many believers are lacking. Many believers do not know how to have communion, how to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I remember when I when the Lord gave me uh, the book on the benefits of the communion of the Holy Spirit, the benefits of the communion of the Holy Spirit, that was 2015. That book has blessed many believers. Many believers have been blessed by that book. Just go to my website, www.holyspirit.com. HolySpiritConnect.com. You will have the book there, the benefits of the communion of the Holy Spirit. Download it. Download it for free. It's just for free. Go down. Go there. HolySpiritConnect.com. <laughs> Let me not just start stammer here now. But here, in talking about that book, I met believers who would actually who actually asked me. They asked me, say, is it about uh, about uh, the Lost Supper? The Lord gave you revelation about the Lost Supper. I said, <laughs> communion that many of us know is the Lost Supper. The communion we take in the church on Sunday. I said, no, I'm talking about Second Corinthians 13, 14, that Paul prayed for the Corinthians about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, uh, the grace of God, and the communion, the kononia, fellowship. Fellowship is of the Holy Spirit. It is true fellowship to get to know the Holy Spirit. It is true communion. You get to know the Holy Spirit. That's where you learn His voice. That's where you learn His ways. Communion. So here, this particular book, by the grace of God, I, uh, there are practical steps here. It's not in my website yet. It's not in the Amazon yet. But I trust the Holy Spirit that that will be done sooner. I, for those in Nigeria, if you're in Nigeria, you want a copy of this book, you can get one. We can get one across to you. Uh, it depends on where you are, okay? If, it, if it's a place that uh, is not accessible in that sense of uh, uh, um, probably to post it to you or whatever that means, we would probably let you know. But we want to bless you with this book. We want to help you to have personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. We want to help you to have personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. This will change your life. It will change your ministry, your marriage, your business, your career. You need it. You need relationship with the Holy Spirit. You need to have personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is where I'm going to stop today. And I want to thank you for being part of this. But before we go, let's pray that uh, we will not take the Holy Spirit for granted. We are going to, that this season, we want to have personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. We want to dwell in communion. We want to, want to dwell in fellowship. That, that will become our dwelling place. Like the, like the Bible says concerning John. John said, I was in the spirit on the last day. I was in the spirit on the last day. So it is possible to dwell in the spirit, that the spirit will become your dwelling place. Like the word says, live in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desire of the flesh. So it is possible to live in the spirit, dwell in the spirit, tabernacle in the spirit. And the spirit, that is the Holy Ghost, will be your dwelling place. You don't visit the Holy Ghost, not visit the Spirit, just living there. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us the privilege to hear your words today. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you came, you came, you died, you rose from the dead for us to have the Holy Ghost. The Word of God tells us how you said to the disciples, your disciples, that they should wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Ghost that they should wait for the promise of the Father. And the Bible tells us that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one accord in the upper room, and the Holy Ghost came as a mighty rushing wind, came as a gloomy tongue, as a fire upon every one of them, sat upon every one of them, and thereafter they stepped out 
doing the miraculous, doing the supernatural, doing a lot for the kingdom of our God and our dear Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, just like the early church allowed the Holy Spirit to move in their lives. They have fellowship with the Holy Spirit that even when Ananias and Sapphira tried to take, uh, uh, trying to make themselves uh, make themselves, give themselves a name, make themselves important uh, in, in the eyes of the Holy Spirit by taking his place. Peter spoke for the Holy Ghost and judged him upon them. We want to know the Holy Spirit like they did in the early church. Oh dear Jesus Christ, we want to truly know the Holy Spirit this day, this hour. We want to walk with the Holy Spirit. We want the reality of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our homes, in our in our ministries. We want to see the Holy Spirit in the church again. We are tired of of, of, of self-efforts, tired of lies, manipulations, control, witchcraft in the church. We are tired of awkward in the church. We want the true church again. Let the church be the church. Let the church be the church, the pillar and the ground of truth. We want to see you, Jesus Christ, move in the church again, purge your church again, purify the church. We want to see the fire of the Holy Ghost in the church. We want to see Lives, uh, lives that are that are reflecting the character of God, reflecting the very nature of Christ. That are that are reflecting who the Father is, manifesting the glory of God, displaying who the Father is to this generation. We thank you, Father in heaven. All we are saying to you, Father, this moment is that we want the Holy Spirit. We truly want to see the Holy Spirit. We want you, Holy Spirit. We want your voice. We want your love. We want your presence. We want your power. We want all that you are, Holy Spirit. All that you are, Holy Spirit, for all that we are, we surrender. Help us to surrender all to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being part of the broadcast. I appreciate the fellowship we share together. I look forward to seeing you by God's grace on Monday as we continue looking at Take Not the Holy Spirit for Granted this season. The Lord bless you.